in incredible times. We are the sector of sectors. Artificial intelligence, big data, will be the future of our industries, all industries. Countries that are going to try are the ones that have that ability to get technology and produce technology. We need to make artificial intelligence human. Everything is and will be connected. Hello everyone, I'm Tabit Majithia, Senior Editor of Mobile World Live and I'm delighted to be hosting our first LinkedIn Live session for MWC Barcelona 2022. Today I'll be joined by Mark Hallander, Director of Conferences for MWC Barcelona and we are so excited to introduce and discuss the six themes, six themes which will be shaping MWC Barcelona next year. Later on, we'll also run down how you can get involved in the conference programme of the world's largest and most influential digital technology and connectivity events. So, Mark, it's great to have you with us. Um, first things first, have you had a good summer? Yeah, hi, Kevin. Um, yeah, the summer's been good. Uh, I think technically we're still going through summer here in the UK, but I think I'm right in saying that MWC in June was the most amount of sun that we've had. Um, but yeah, <laughs> pleasure to be here. Great, yeah, sure. And obviously, it's been a busy summer for all of us at the GSMA, and particularly for you guys, uh, as you have been busy defining the themes for the next MWC. To kick off, um, maybe run down what the themes are and why they're so critical for the show and the sector as a well. whole. Yeah, so the pandemic uh, has really accelerated um, our reliance on connectivity, which um, I think we've all seen over the last 12 to 18 months. Uh, has helped millions of people endure uh, lockdown. Um, and I think, you know, if lockdown happened 10 to 15 years ago, we would have had a very different experience. You know, that's for sure without Netflix, Deliveroo, or even, you know, Joe Wicks here in the UK. Uh, but, you know, now as we're starting to come out of it, um, we are looking towards the future with optimism and almost a sense of renewed ambition. Um, and so that's why... Uh, MWC, the theme uh, is uh, connected, uh, Connectivity Unleashed, uh, because we want to hone in on the disruptive value connectivity uh, brought and, you know, is bringing uh, to both business and society. And, you know, I guess with things opening up again, uh, we want to really understand, you know, what can we expect in the future? And then, so that sort of feeds into uh, the six themes that we'll be covering uh, today. Um, and, you know, those themes, um, you know, are 5G Connect, uh, cloud net, internet of everything, advancing AI, fintech, and uh, tech horizon. Sure. Um, maybe we'll uh, dive deeper a bit into each of those uh, themes. And let's start with uh, the big one, 5G Connect. Of course, we're now seeing 5G evolve from the initial sort of use cases of mobile, faster mobile broadband, and a wide range of use cases are now beginning to emerge, providing business opportunities for operators uh, and enterprises. But at the same time, the consumer case does continue to be strong. Uh, recent smartphone figures from IDC and other uh, research companies suggest that the device market is also being lifted by uptake of 5G devices. So uh, a question for you is, what, what will the theme look like uh, in 2022 and how do you see the discussions going? Yeah, I, I think you touched upon a number of very key areas there. You know, we want to focus on what 5G is connecting. Um, so, you know, the, the first 5G networks are launched you know, commercially um, in 2019, 2020, and, you know, it's connecting virtually everything together now. Um, so just as 4G uh, was credited in you know, development of the gig economy, um, you know, 5G is delivering, um, you know, many new applications and many new services. And, you know, that's what we're hoping to really, you know, focus on, you know, those use cases, but also uh, the partnerships that underpin a lot of that as well. Um, you know, it's no longer just mobile talking to mobile, uh, it's mobile talking to many different uh, industries and that's where the value is. Um, so it could be things like smart factory, retail, smart cities, um, you know, GSM AI, uh, I think um, in one of the recent reports said that 5G networks are gonna cover one third of the world's population by 2025. And, you know, we want to really touch on well, what does that really look like? And, you know, what are the business models that are gonna help, you know, grow that? Um, so I think it's a, it's a really exciting 
uh, theme that I think could certainly attracts a lot of uh, great submissions to look at some of these cases from augmented reality, virtual reality, from tele telehealth and, and, and so on. So I think we really want to focus on where that value is. Sure. I mean, it, it's also going beyond the fact that, you know, we used to talk about which countries are adopting 5G and now we're moving towards what they're actually doing with 5G. And obviously governments are heavily involved as well in making sure that the technology works for them. Um, but as 5G does begin to evolve, we're also seeing the underlying network infrastructure also makes great strides to become more more sort of virtualized, more adaptable to to these UK use cases and have the capability to accommodate them. Uh, and this is precisely what the next theme we're going to talk about is about, isn't it? It's CloudNet. And um, I think it's a lot about uh, Open RAN, Edge, um, and those sorts of things coming to the fore. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, um, typically in the past, you know, the network discussion will be part of the 5G theme. And we, we separated it out. Not that they're mutually exclusive, uh, but we wanted to put more spotlights in terms of some of the network evolutions that have been taking place over the last couple of years and will continue down this sort of uh, path. Um, and one uh, big um, area that you missed out there is cloud. You know, uh, cloud is forcing uh, many to define, you know, how and you know where the telco of the future um, should really operate. Um, even before the pandemic, you know, the telecom industry was having to manage over decades worth of disruption from you know digital companies like Uber and Netflix, and you know who sets you know sort of new standard of uh, those sort of online experiences. Um, so from a mobile standpoint, you know, our networks have had to adapt, um, you know, you know, almost um, yearly. And, you know, today cloud is you know, one of those key neighbours of that sort of large scale transformation that needs to take place. Um, you know, there's been uh, after MBC this year, cloud was absolutely everywhere. But, you know, the market is projected to reach, I think, 75 billion by uh, 2026. So, you know, it really is something that we can't ignore. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not all pros. There are cons to this. Um, and, you know, it's not just cloud as well. Like, you know, like, like you say, there's technologies like Open RAN, edge computing, millimetre wave as well, um, all of which are creating this new blueprint uh, that, you know, research the network economics uh, for the future. And so, again, you know, we, we want to sort of tap into that, you know, um, taking Open RAN as an example, you know, I think there's over 70 operators from uh, nearly 40 uh, markets that have either deployed or committed to open RAN deployments in you know, Axiata, um, you know, MTN, um, I think I read about on um, My World Live. Uh, but the, the point being is that, you know, it's, you know, open RAN is then more global. And again, there are pros and cons to all of these, but we, we need to sort of create uh, a theme that can help us deep dive on this and get you know, both sides of the argument. It's just sticking with open RAN there for, for a second. Um... Obviously, there is a question of how advanced this technology really is. If it's um, if it's going to be used uh, in the main network architecture anytime soon, and then we've also had some controversy recently with Nokia saying they'd um, called work on the ORAN alliance due to concerns about information being shared with companies that are of uh, a U.S. sort of national security concern. Uh, do you believe that those sorts of topics will come up next year? Do you think that there will be questions about obviously oran is here to stay but you know when when will we see it actually come to the fore yeah um, I, I think that's that that sort of hits upon a really sort of key area again and you know i, I think that the short answer is yes i think we, we do need to talk about this and what capacity i think that's still a bit tbc um i think when we're looking at open ran there's a lot of uh, questions that need to be answered in terms of you know who has overall ownership of it you know um, that there's there's opportunities for um uh, sort of new companies to get involved and help sort of manage that sort of service. But um, I think there are some underlying you know, security issues and um, I think that will need to sort of be ironed out before it really sort of uh, maybe reaches its full potential. Uh, but, you know, that, that actually touches upon um, another um, key area that we're looking at. You know, this year at MWC, if you were there, you would have seen uh, one of the new formats uh, called the studio, uh, which is, as the name suggests, um, a sort of studio-led discussion. Um, the point being is that we, we want to uh, encourage more discussion, more debate and having both sides of the argument. And so for things like Open RAN, where there are many conflicting um, ideas and uh, views on that, we want to bring those together because I think, you know, the, the, the whole value of 5G is, you know, it has to work for everyone for that you know, value to be, you know, truly realised. Sure, makes sense. And you mentioned this year's MWC, there was a lot of talk about public cloud. Do you expect that to be a major theme as well? 
Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think uh, I, I don't think we can get away from uh, from public cloud. Um, again, I think. Uh, which is part of the reason why we have this um, big theme on CloudNet is that there's so much um, innovation that, have, that has been taking place from a network from the core to the edge, and we really need to start um, giving more time and more platform to 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 that. And so I think public cloud, with the opportunity that you know could be had from operators partnering up with those cloud hyperscalers, uh, I, I think yeah that, that that will certainly be uh, one of the many uh, key areas that we'll focus on. Sure. Uh, next theme, uh, advancing AI. I, I really like covering AI for my board live. Um, it's kind of moving away from the operator connectivity angle, um, but it's been a major talking point ab among operators and of course the big tech giants like Google, like Facebook, who are constantly working on updating the technology and developing it for real world use cases and you know benefit uh, benefit humans and productivity and wider benefits to society. Um, but there's also the other side of questions around ethics and principles around the technology. Um, so as the theme, theme name suggests, how is AI advancing? Yeah, and, and again, this is a huge area that I you know, can't wait to read all these submissions that we get on this because I don't think there's a silver bullet to you know, how we frame it or what topics we, we focus on. You know, the one thing I, uh, I, I'm you know, really enthusiastic, you know, excited about is the amount of investment that's going on in AI. Um, I think uh, KPMG wrote uh, a while back that you know investments is going to top you know 170 billion by 2025, and even re more recently, uh, MTS, um, you know, um, the Russian operator, launched a 100 million dollar venture fund uh, focused on startups and AI. Um, you know, they're, they're not alone in this. You know, I think Nvidia launched its own startup accelerator a couple of years ago. Google, Microsoft, you know, even Baidu out in China. Um, they're all been, uh, they're all launching these funds that focus on uh, really trying to um, uh, you know evolve AI and understand you know where we can kind of fit that in. And so, what 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 does that mean? Well, there's there's a lot of um, areas we could go down from a network standpoint, um, you know, network transformation or for business uh, transformation. Um, we, we are very open. I, I, I don't really want to sort of uh, hedge my bets as to what um, what focus we take with advancing AI, but I think we're at the stage now where there are a lot more use cases. Again, which you'll see as an underlying uh, message across all the themes is th those sort of use cases where there's a lot more uh, stories to be told. Um, and with data as well being at the heartbeat of that, um, you know, uh, we, we've been talking about uh, big data analytics, machine learning for a while, but how did they also work together uh, now with the advent of you know, quantum computing as well, adding to the mix? There's a lot more use cases that can be done in real time through you know, intelligent data, intelligent processing and so on. So, um, you know, I think from a government standpoint as well, I think there, there's some policy that underpins a lot of that. You know, how you can, um, you know, protect uh, the end user, protect the data without stifling innovation. Um, I think that's a million dollar question that I don't think anyone has the answer to at the moment. But again, is part of that sort of wider discussion. Yeah, it's funny, funny you mentioned that actually. Um, the UK are about to, about to announce, I think today, a major AI push um, with, with a framework which will include uh, ethics and principles and also um, encourage businesses in the country to adopt advances in, in the technology to improve productivity. Um, the, I read, read an article in the FT about this and they said it was the, the push was designed to keep up with countries like the US and China, which are the early pacers. Would, would you agree to that? Yeah, I, I think um, I, I, in part I do. I think there's there's still not a perfect uh, public-private partnership that seems to have um, developed so far because I think everyone is still learning, um, you know, what needs to be done and how much um, government needs to get involved versus private. But I think what you are seeing is some good uh, dialogue being opened up from a public standpoint with private, which historically, and going back, uh, you know, you know, a decade or two, wouldn't have um, happened. Uh, but, you know, governments are starting to realise actually the impact this could have on society. And also, you know, with uh, things like the Cambridge Analy um, Analytica um, standard that happened a couple of years ago, I think that's really, um, really uh, sort of honed in uh, for, for a lot of governments and data protection authorities to get more involved. Um, but I think, you know, in terms of Europe and some of the frameworks we're setting up, I think, you know, it's, it's certainly making the right, uh, taking the right steps in the right direction. And it'd be interesting to see how the UK government and those uh, 
uh, the works that they're putting together really sort of play out in practice. But I think the initial signs are good. Um, the sort of competition geopolitically but across regions, I think, is always a bit of a, a hot potato. But I think as long as uh, we all are united and actually have a, a sort of uh, a framework that we can all agree to, I think that's really where, where our, our industry is trying to head. Sure. Uh, moving on to Internet of Everything. Now, obviously, this sounds like a an evolution of the Internet of Things, just uh, a much broader base. And it really describes a world where billions of objects are interconnected and ultimately makes valuable use of the data generated by, by all these connected devices. I know, speaking offline, uh, you had a very good example of, of how to sum this one up. Yeah, yeah, um, it's precisely that, really. We, I think, you know, IoT has been one of those um, key themes that we've had the last, you know, few years. And uh, we we could have kept it the same, but actually the real value now is seeing the bigger narrative to your point. You know, we're not um, just looking at uh, one use case, uh, but we're actually trying to understand how use cases can actually combine and work together. So in the past, IoT will be looking at connecting devices to one another also, you know, uh, through automation. Um, but you know, we, we, we want to see how different use cases work. So the, the example that I, I shared with you offline is um, if you uh, are a cyclist, which I imagine you are, um, <laughs> and you happen to uh, to fall off your bike um, and you're wearing a helmet, a smart helmet, um, could your uh, helmet then link to the mo- uh, to local hospital where your data, personal data is able to be uploaded to the uh, to the doctor on site? who then uh, calls out the ambulance with the relevant information and then they uh, through connected um, uh, satellites is able uh, satellites traffic lights sorry is able to be met with green lights all the way there so they can get to the victim or the, uh, the, you know, the patient a lot quicker than they have done before um, there's there's a lot to unpick in that one but the point being is how can each individual use case work with others and so you're, you're not looking just at um, objects, but you're looking at you know data. You're looking at people. You're looking at processes, and I think that's where there is some real value. Uh, again, use cases that are underpinning everything we're looking at now. Um, we, we're at a, a sort of period of our industry, I think, where we we are in a place where we can start seeing across different verticals, not just what mobile talking to mobile or mobile talking to smart cities. It's everyone coming together. And, you know, like, like you say, we have, I think, over 40 billion devices. Um, and yet, you know, Cisco uh, estimates that I think nearly 99% of physical objects uh, that may one day be part of this Internet of Everything is yet to be connected, which is just staggering, really. Um, so I think there's there's huge legs in this one. Um, and it'd be you know, great to hear, you know, what the industry has to offer when it comes to, you know, combining these use cases, when it comes to call for speakers. Sure, and it really um, hones in on the fact that, that in, uh, more collaboration is needed with the wider ecosystem to make make sure that all this data is actually valuable and used in the real world, isn't it? Yeah, completely, uh, completely. I mean, I think that's the premise of five G. Um, you know, we we can continue talking to one another, and we all agree to certain extents with what we need, what technology can actually impact and um you know a transform uh but uh, we ultimately need to hear it from from those guys who we think we can help and provide value to and we are starting to see that more and more uh, each year um you know i, I remember going around mwc must be about four or five years ago and it was almost like an auto show with the, the really cool uh, connected vehicles in, in in the exhibition area and that's still there but there's more now coming in terms of this then turn into a, a smart city there's more health uh, on display and so i think that really is indicative of where we're going as an industry but more importantly that's where we want to be going more and more with the content that we're sort of putting on uh, within the conference as well sure uh, so the next one is Tech Horizon. Now, unlike the other three that we've talked about, this isn't as clear um, by the name as what it's about. Um, I understand it covers a range of topics from looking at innovative startups as part of the Four Years From Now program, as well as major pushes uh, in the industry allow- around both climate uh, and diversity. Um, I think the climate point is is very interesting and it's very topical at the moment. Uh, just today, I wrote a story about BT committing to um, reducing their net uh, zero target uh, 15 years earlier than expected, which was in response to a UN 
report which said the damage at the moment being done by the world is irreversible in terms of global global heating. Um, how do you see this uh, interesting uh, theme evolving and taking shape next year? Yeah, I mean that's that's a crucial area for for GSMA, but also the industry. And you know, uh, the, the one thing I would uh, add just before I, I sort of go into that is that there are going to be certain horizontal themes that we have uh, within each of uh, the topics uh, within each of those themes and sustainability and climate is very much part of that one i think you know for example with 5g and even 6g as we look towards that you know sustainability has to be part of that conversation right from the word go which actually we did this year uh, my colleague alex clark um you know did some fantastic 6g sessions uh, where she brought sustainability together and that's you know really um what you'll hopefully see across the board when it comes to sustainability and things like security as well crucial topics that underpin a lot of the discussions um but but in particular looking at climate you know this is very much part of the tech horizon uh, theme you know with cop uh, 26 taking place um in november you know it's absolutely critical for the industry um and so we're we're hoping to address um you know the climate crisis because we recognize as a mobile industry you know we have a unique role to play um you know like like every sector we have to reduce our emissions uh, and we have been taking uh, steps to do so you know your bc story is just one example of that you know where a significant proportion of operators have already committed to net zero targets by 20, 2050 and even before uh, but really where the value is, again, is um, looking beyond our own footprint and actually looking to see how we can provide solutions to some of the other sectors to help them uh, reduce their emissions uh, through digital. Um, and so part of that Tech Horizon theme is going to be very much looking at some of the, you know, the really, really cool work that we're doing, the really cool innovation, uh, but you know, it has that purpose that underpins all of it. Um, and you know, that, that can also be sort of seen, uh, I'm sure, within... Uh, the four years from now uh, elements as well that, that you know that, that you mentioned you know tech horizon um, aims to look at um you know all the technology that's now been integrated into our lives uh, but we also want to look towards the future you know to see what's going to be influencing you and i um you know putting the spotlight on uh, some of those startups some of those innovations you know in areas such as healthcare automotive drones you name it so we want to combine those with the investors you know to bring those ecosystems together um and so four years from now uh, will be part of that. Um, uh, the um, climate is part of it, but also diversity as well. As we look for this tech horizon, we want to look towards the future, this new society. And you know, again, this year, we rebuilt on our success of Women for Tech that we've been doing for previous years, but we uh, expanded the conversation uh, to include those wider case studies uh, for equality, uh, diversity, um, and inclusion, of course. And so we want to continue to act for that change. Um, and so, um, yeah, this, this is a real sort of uh, uh, important area, uh, important theme, because it actually highlights three of our core uh, industry targets and priorities, I think. So again, you know, we are always looking for um, some great examples of people that are really helping push that needle uh, forward and, you know, helping, you know, to, uh, to spotlight those individuals, but also those companies that are helping to sort of make the world a better place, I guess. Sure, sure, that makes sense. Uh, and it sounds like it's gonna be a very interesting and sort of broad ranging, broad ranging theme. Um, Finally, uh, fintech. Now, fintech is um, it's a major sort of topic that's been around for years. And um, I mean, the mobile ecosystem is sort of best place, I think, to to talk about the advancements in, in this area. Um, we've seen operators across the emerging markets in particular um, have a big, bigger presence in fintech. And, you know, using your mobile phone uh, for for your for your finances. Um, has been never more so important than in COVID times when, you know, uh, it was harder to access uh, traditional uh, means. But um, this year, we're also going to look at some of the other interesting areas around uh, digital financial technologies, such as uh, digital currencies, NFTs and metaverse. Would you would you like to um, talk us through a bit about that? Yeah, no pressure. Um, so uh, <laughs> we're really actually very excited uh, by having a theme on fintech. Um, you know, this is, I have to say, the first time uh, that we have a dedicated sector-specific 
theme. Uh, but I think it really underpins um, how our industry and industries are evolving and becoming closer together. So in previous years, we would have had, and we will continue to do so, I should probably emphasize, have these, these different uh, sectors, verticals, uh, speaking across the program. But we uh, were very keen to actually put our um, sort of flag in the ground to actually uh, put the spotlight on fintech uh, and show how much growth and opportunity there is for mobile and finance to come together. Um, you know, we've seen over the last five or ten years a number of mobile operators, you know, enter the space. Um, you know, from from those out in Asia, in 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 uh, in, in Africa as well, uh, just to sort of help uh, diversify uh, their strategies and their offerings. And the result is, you know, has been fantastic in terms of you know new revenue streams and the impact it's also having, uh, which you mentioned um, uh, just then. Um, we have um, also had over the last couple of years uh, a number of uh, major, you know, new players within the fintech uh, space you know, participate in uh, Barcelona. You know, this year alone we had Stan and Bank and Revolut, for example, and there's more uh, that are coming to Barcelona. And so we, we've seen there's this huge opportunity, and within the GSMA as well, we've got fantastic teams working to build up communities to engage and work together to understand how we can. Uh, scale and diversify offerings on both uh, on both sides from a, you know from a fintech perspective but also from a mobile uh, perspective um and so we want to sort of retap into that uh, but then also to to other points is that uh, we've also seen a, loads of other really cool trends and opportunities arise from you know digital currencies you know blockchain fraud identity and nfts like you say you know the non fungible tokens the digital certificate of authentication which has been in the news a lot um, you know, Lionel Messi, um, as I'm sure a number of people will, will be aware of, uh, has signed for PSG. And so part of his um, uh, fee for, uh, for joining PSG was fan tokens, uh, which created a lot of interest in NFT. Um, don't ask me the specifics of that because I'm still almost trying to get my head around, uh, around that. But uh, also uh, last week you would have seen Kings of Leon. Um, with their latest album that got uh, with the NFTs were put into space with uh, SpaceX and um, you know that they had is it the four um, four members of the public that got to sort of go into space without astronauts in space and they were able to do it all automated and they they played Kings of Leon in, in there as well so um, whilst it's very very early days uh, in this development of this truly digital commerce you know it really is exciting and. You know, having fintech as part of uh, MWC now, um, I think mobile ecosystems is very much at the heartbeat of this. And so we want to make sure Barcelona is a natural home to explore all of these innovations and disruptions. And, um, you know, I'll probably also add that, you know, we're, we're aiming to do this, you know, looking further afield than Barcelona, but within Shanghai, for example. But we're, we're looking to have a similar uh, spotlights on a theme, um, uh, uh, on a uh, vertical as part of the theme going forward as well. So it really shows that we are moving with the times, we're, we're moving with opportunities. And so, uh, yeah, we're excited to yeah welcome the fintech ecosystem to Barcelona next year. Sounds really exciting. Mark, can you just break down exactly how NFTs work for us? Um, I, I Sorry, the connection's getting really bad here. I think I need 5G <laughs> in my home. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so now the most important part, how can the connectivity and digital community, including our viewers, get involved with next year's show? So um, very simply, we have our call for speakers uh, open, um, which is currently open. It's open till October the 15th. Uh, we do this every year where we open up to the industry, to industry partners, uh, to put forward your own submissions. You know, what we've talked about today uh, is an overall theme. These are very broad and, you know, we've only just scratched the surface. Uh, the real uh, content and context really comes uh, from a lot of the conversations and submissions we get from, from, uh, from, uh, from the industry. So, you know, if you are interested in taking part, uh, if you go on mwcbarcelona.com, there's become a speaker. And then within there, you can put forward uh, yourself as a speaker or if you're speaking on uh, on behalf of the company or representing the company, you can submit on someone else's behalf. And what, what we look for is um, topics that you think uh, is going to help move us, uh, move that needle forward, help us as an industry move forward. 
And so uh, what we'll look within that is a, um, a submission title, a bit of blurb, who your speaker is going to be, uh, is there going to be a demo, and and so on. Um, you know, we, we aren't looking for the uh, necessary, the complete version of what your talk can be about, uh, because I think, you know, one thing that is worth reiterating, there has to be a bit of flexibility. Um, I think there's flexibility going on everywhere at the moment, but um, ultimately we want to work with you to make sure that your your speaker, if your submission does get accepted, um, you know, works within our program. So uh, just have that in, in the back of your mind that, you know, we, we may need to work with you and adapt a few things, but ultimately this is your opportunity to put forward what topics you think will be relevant for these themes. And how would a submission stand out, would you say? Um, there's no silver bullet to these things. Um, I think over the years, uh, submissions have naturally evolved. And so what we said was a good submission a couple of years ago may be very different today. But I think the one thing that we uh, that really does stand up uh, stand out, because you know, just to put a bit of context um, to the submissions, we receive um roughly around 2000 submissions each year which is which is incredible um you know it, it really does show the appetite um you know uh, of people wanting to get involved uh, and you know it, it presents us a really interesting challenge because then we got to work out well what submissions stand out from from others and why this person over that person and so what we've really worked out uh, and again there's no silver bullet to this one but if you're able to summarize what your key message is, you know, really make it succinct as to, you know, what what, what is your key message that you're looking to get across? That 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 is first uh, you know, first and foremost. You can add a bit of um, uh, context to it, but we're not necessarily looking for your submission to be a uh, an essay. Uh, we're not expecting it to uh, to begin with the words of you know five G is transforming the world, and because uh, as we've just discussed, we're already aware of that. We want to know specifics of what five G is or what you are doing specifically within five G that's helping us get to that end goal. And so, the more you can really showcase um, your value within that sort of ecosystem, the better. Um, another thing that we're looking for, and I, I mentioned a few times, is those sort of partnerships. You know, who are you? working with is there an opportunity for you to bring um different vertical uh representation to you um you know maybe that's through a joint presentation maybe it's coming as a uh you know uh, they, they they'll be speaking uh, uh or presenting the use case on your behalf maybe you guys want to join the panel discussion you know we, we are very open to uh, attracting more players from the ecosystem and um, so you know again you know be able to uh, share who your potential speakers could be within those sectors, then that would be great. Um, and you know, I should probably add, you don't necessarily need to um, confirm all the speakers for the submissions because we appreciate there's a lot of discussions, there's a lot of sensitivity sometimes with reaching out to companies to confirm them for the submission and that we may not unfortunately end up going with your submission. So we want to avoid any um, sens sensitivities there. So. Um, you know, if you do have people that you think you could engage with, write that down. And then if we do progress with your submission, we can then sort of pick that up and see if we can get them down. And tying into that, um, what should um, people think about when nominating speakers from their own organisations? So a, um, we always look for seniority, uh, of course. You know, this, this is an industry leading um, event. So we want to bring in the right people. Having said that, um, we, we also want to make sure we have a diverse and varied uh, speaker lineup, which um, I've spoken to many, many people uh, across the industry in the research for, uh, for these themes. Uh, and I'll continue to sort of bang that drum. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a nice diverse lineup. So that means uh, getting people from various backgrounds, but also gender as well. We, we, we want to see more gender, uh, gender balance uh, agendas. So, if, if you are a CEO out there and you're, and you're happy to be listening and you, you have your protege uh, who happens to be uh, the, the VP of such and such, put her forward. You know, we, we want to see a nice varied background, um, you know, or, or perhaps put yourself, uh, put both yourselves forward and then, and then we can kind of work with you to see who the right person is for the right discussion. Um, so that's that that really is a, a key area that we want to sort of really plug and um, hopefully we'll, we'll get a real positive response. And uh, 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 just a quick one on what not to do. What would you say? What, what advice would you give? Um, we don't want any product 
pictures. Um, that's that's the one thing that I, I would say. Um, you know, the exhibition, and we are working very closely together with the content and uh, the exhibition to see how uh, some of the conversations can continue out into the exhibition floor. But the, co uh, the conference is made for um, thought leadership, not product pictures. Uh, pictures. And, uh, you know, I, I have to say, we don't get too many of them, um, but we still do get a few. And so that's the one thing that we don't really want to see. I think people would want to come along to see how great this person's um, solution is when there's there's many other people providing similar solutions. And so we want uh, companies coming together from across the ecosystem to focus on that thought leadership rather than their own individual um, business plan. Sure. And I'm sure um, a lot of our viewers will be interested in the next one. Can you preview any confirmed keynotes at this stage? I wish I could um, tell you uh, some just yet, but uh, unfortunately, um, we will have a press release coming up um, shortly that we'll be able to uh, share some of those. Um, but you know, we are still very much um, in the process of um, identifying some some key speakers, and so that those uh, conversations are still ongoing. As, you know, as you know, this year we had Elon Musk, which was absolutely fantastic, and. Um, you know, I think, you know, there's a lot of value uh, put to these keynotes. And so we want to make sure we get the right people um, that sort of take part. And so there'll, there'll be a few announcements coming up. But unfortunately, as it currently stands, we're not able to sort of shed the light of who they are so far. We're not going to get anything out of you today. Um, moving on to a few uh, audience questions. Uh, first one is, will there be any progress made on privacy and human rights as core themes? So we do have um, part of MWC is that we have the ministerial program, uh, which um, some people may or may not be uh, aware of. But this is a, a program that's uh, dedicated to uh, policymakers, regulators, governments around the world. And um, each year we, we, we have a and, and so part of uh, the program is, is invitation only, meaning that you, know, you, you have to be you have to meet a certain criteria to be invited in. But part of the conversations that we have each year is things like connecting the unconnected, you know, data privacy, um, financial inclusion, connected women, and uh, of course, uh, looking at human rights as well. Uh, and so we are going to be um, uh, having those conversations with the right people uh, because there are a lot of sensitive issues that sort of form part of that. And again, you know, there's not just one organisation working on it; it's that collaborative efforts that bring them all together. So we'll be having it um, very much part of that ministerial program. Um, we, we will no doubt uh, still be feeding some of that, um, you know, through to the the, the, um, the more public settings so within NWC, um, because it is absolutely crucial. And you know, perhaps you know, the, you know the, the topics need to be set still, but you know, it does feed into things like you know, tech horizons, looking towards the future, where we are looking to see what this society that we're looking to build is really all about and of course you know privacy is very much part of that and again it underpins quite a lot of things like ai uh, uh, for example so um i guess in answer to the question it wouldn't necessarily be a, a sort of core theme but it'd be one of those horizontal uh, topics that feed into quite a few of the areas that we'll be looking at sure uh, we've had another one. Uh, it's about something we didn't actually mention during the, the, the chat. Uh, will SDGs be in connection with 5G and 6G be a key topic during MWC 22? I, I, I hope so. And um, again, th this will, um, you know, hopefully the people asking questions will also be submitting and putting forward their own ideas of, you know, what, uh, what we can be talking about within it. So, you know, as it currently stands, you know, we are uh, not quite, but almost working from a sort of blank canvas where actually all these great ideas like the SDGs, of which we as a mobile industry were the first industry to sign up to back in 2016. Um, and so we are undoubtedly going to be continuing, uh, you know, that sort of discussion. And again, looking to feed it into a lot of discussions that we will be having across the themes. 6G, though, I think is a really um, important point. And I mentioned earlier how... As we're starting to build out 6G, or not build out, but getting those discussions beginning with 6G, a lot of focus is on getting the standards, but also we want to work out, aside from the standards, what are those key priorities that we need to ensure as part of that roadmap going forward? And, you know, sustainability, SDGs is very much part of that. And so, 
SDGs covers a lot of areas, all 17 of them. So undoubtedly, we're going to be feeding through a lot of that uh, across the themes that we'll have. Where I, I think it's going to be uh, coming up to, well, it'll be on you guys to re tell me where, where you want them. Sure. Makes sense. Uh, Mark, I think that's all we really have time for. So uh, thanks a lot for that presentation. And I'm sure we'll hear lots from you uh, in the lead up to, to the event. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, just to, say, uh, to, to close out, just remember the closing date for these submissions uh, is Friday the 15th of October this year. Uh, head to www.mwcbarcelona.com forward slash conference forward slash become dash a dash speaker. We also have the 2022 GLOMO Awards, which are now open for submission. You can find out more information on the awards and how to submit on the link on your screen. Uh, upcoming events. Next week, we have the first virtual keynote for MWC Africa on the 28th to the 30th of September. Uh, the month of October, we have a virtual takeover by Mobile 360 Asia Pacific. In October, we are also really excited to be hosting MWC LA taking place in person on the 26th to 28th of October, 2021. If you're in North America, please make sure you head over there. The month of November, we have a virtual takeover by the Mobile 360 Latin, Latin America event. And all these events are free to attend. To take advantage of that, head over to the websites now. Uh, so let's get ready to meet at MWC Barcelona in uh, next year, which will be held between 28th to the 3rd, 28th February to the 3rd of March 2022. And we will leave you with a small teaser of what you can expect over there. Take care and see you soon. It's time to look forward to escaping the usual, exploring, debating, being astounded, having your eyes open, reimagining the future, shaping industry's agenda, discovering the next big thing, connecting face to face, building enduring partnerships, and finding new opportunities. Now it's time to reconnect reimagine and reinvent. And look forward to getting back to business. MWC Barcelona.